Hi, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing a ballistic test of sorts. Uh, what we are going to be testing in particular is this Liberty Ammunition Civil Defense 10mm. Uh, this is a 60 grain projectile rated at 2400 feet per second. We want to see how that compares to our 5.45 SBR, so we have uh, the AKS 74Us here. Uh, and we'll be firing our 60 grain Hornady VMAX, so we have the same mass bullet, and we'll see what kind of velocity we get uh, out of these, I believe they're 8.2 inch barrels. And also our 223 uh, AR pistol, uh, this I believe has a 7.5 inch barrel, and we'll be using a 60 grain VMAX in this as well. Uh, we have two different manufacturers, Freedom Munitions and HPR, we'll just pick the one that gives us the better chronograph reading. For our 10 millimeter, we're going to be running our Glock 20, uh, with a factory standard uh, four and a half inch barrel, I believe it is. We also have a Glock factory six inch barrel that we're gonna uh, slap on there too and uh, see what kind of velocity figures we get. Would this be a viable home defense option in lieu of one of these short barrel weapons? Uh, so could you just use a standard uh, what amounts to service handgun and get similar ballistics? And that's what we're gonna try to find out next. All right, so we're about 12 feet away. Uh, first up is going to be uh, one of our AKS 74Us using the 60 grain Hornady VMAX. We're going to try to get uh, three rounds over the chronograph, and we'll just take the average from that. So one of those was an error, so we fired it extra, but we got three. Uh, let's go take a look. So our low was 23.17, our high was 23.49, and our average was 23.34. All right, we'll grab the other AKS-74U, and we'll fire it and see if we get anything different. All right, here we are again with our other AKS-74U. We're about uh, 12 feet away, and this is the Hornady... 60 grain VMAX. Okay. Our low was 2296. Our high was 2369. Our average was 2332, so virtually the same as what we had before. So we're looking at about 2,330 feet per second for the 545 60 grain Hornady VMAX. All right, so we have our Freedom Munition 60 grain VMAX from our AR pistol, about a 7.5 inch barrel, and we're going to give these a try. was 2239 our high was 2282 our average is 2265 so uh, we're definitely giving up uh, a little velocity over the 545 with 223 pressure specs out of the 7.5 inch barrel now if we extend this to the 8.2 like the 545 we might be coming pretty close but it looks like you're going to need to get uh, 556 pressure spec uh, ammunition to really get over that 23, 2400 feet per second range with the uh, with this type of weapon. Okay, next up will be our Glock 20 using a factory 4.5 inch barrel, I believe it is. Uh, this is a Liberty 60 grain. was 2407 our high was 2431 our average was 2422 so from our standard 4.5 inch factory barrel 4.5 inch ish we're already beating the 545 and the 223 60 grain loads uh, quite comfortably so let's go ahead and give the six inch barrel a whirl okay we have our six inch Glock factory barrel installed on our Glock 20 this will be the Liberty 60 grain Civil Defense, about 12 feet. Wow. OK, 
Okay, well so far, I have to say I'm impressed. Uh, from a velocity point of view, our low here was 2,526, so 2,526. Our high was 2,574. Our average was 2,552. So we far exceeded the velocity of our 545 uh, VMAX loading, uh, 60 grain, and same thing for our VMAX loading for our 223. Okay, for our terminal portion of the test, uh, we have... Um, one gallon water jugs these are approximately five inches thick uh, this is more of a penetration test than anything else what i found i, I have no doubt that these rounds are going to expand moving at these velocities uh, there's really little doubt that that's going to happen uh, but what we want to see is how far they're going to penetrate so what i found is the penetration depths in these types of water jugs typically comes out to be about 1.5 times that of ordnance gel uh, Hornady's literature on their 223 and their 545 VMAX round states between about 9.5 to 10.5 inches of penetration, which should roughly equal three jugs of penetration. So we should at least see penetration into the third jug. However, that is also from 16-inch barrels. Uh, being in these shorter barrels, uh, we'll see how that's going to affect performance. Uh, I would suspect we might get actually a little more penetration, but we'll see. Uh, so I'm expecting probably three jugs, uh, and the 10 millimeter Liberty claims 12 inches of penetration. So in order for us to achieve that, we would have to probably punch into this fourth jug. Uh, I'm a little skeptical about that, but we will see. Uh, nonetheless, our rounds are all going to be fired into the same jugs, uh, filled uh, same water jugs. So it should be a fair representation of the penetration depths relative to each other. First up is going to be our 223. This is the Freedom Munitions. We selected uh, that round because it gave us the uh, higher velocity reading over that of the uh, HPR. Our velocity reading, if I remember right, was around 2260-ish. So it's a 60 grain VMAX out of our 7.5 inch AR pistol. Let's see what happens. Okay, and as predicted, we got a bulge on the back of the third jug, so it didn't exit the third jug. Okay, next up will be our 545 60 grain VMAX. Uh, we were averaging about 2330-ish on our feet per second. Uh, we didn't see any real significant difference between the two different AKS-74Us, so we're going to run the classic looking model. Here we go. Okay, and pretty much the same as what we saw with our 223. Uh, we have a bulge on the back of the third jug. So once again, we're looking at approximately uh, 10, maybe 11 inches of penetration uh, in ordnance gel. And again, that lines up pretty well with Hornady's literature. I wasn't sure if the lower velocity would give us more penetration um, due to less fragment. But it looks like these rounds are still easily fragmenting and expanding just as they should. So. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the 10 millimeter. Okay, so we've tried this a couple times now, and what's occurring is after we get two jugs of penetration, our round is deviating uh, off to the side, uh, and so it's inconclusive on our penetration results. So we flanked our, our main row of jugs there with a couple jugs, so hopefully uh, if it deviates again, which it's been doing every time now, uh, it'll, it'll get caught in one of those jugs on the side. Uh, again, this is the Liberty 60 grain civil defense fired out of the Glock 20 with the Glock factory 6 inch barrel. Okay, well, it looks like we got penetration through our second jug. Uh, you can see that the base of the round, which base is a light, co uh, lightweight copper disc, has penetrated through. Uh, it struck our third jug and cracked it, but it looks like it just bounced off it. So it looks like we're getting two jugs of penetration, two complete, uh, which will put this round, uh, since it's cracking the third jug, it, I would say that would put this round about eight inches of penetration in ordnance gel somewhere around in that range so that's a that's quite shallow uh shallower than i would like to have seen uh okay well we'll go ahead and try the uh the four and a half inch barrel the this the standard 
barrel length uh, just to see if that changes anything up. Okay, so we reinstalled the standard uh, four and a half inch factory barrel. Um, we're going to give this a try and see uh, if the lower velocity has any effect. Uh, so we flanked our jugs with our other jugs. <laughs> try to catch that round in case it finds its way out and we'll see what happens. Okay, so we got our, uh, our destroyed our first jug, obviously. Uh, we impact our second, you see it was starting to veer and it made it out the side of the second and then it made it into jug number three. All right, so wrap up on the 10 millimeter 60 grain Liberty Ammunition Civil Defense and how it compares to our short barrel 5.45s and .223. Uh, from a velocity and energy standpoint of view, the 10 millimeter, even with the factory length barrel, uh, four and a half inches, uh, easily bested both the 5.45 and the 2.23, and uh, significantly uh, bested uh, both of those with the six inch barrel. Um, so what's some final thoughts about what the terminal performance looked like? Well, here's the recovered uh, disc, if you would, the base of that copper bullet. It's like a little 40 caliber disc, wad cutter. Uh, I was able to find one uh, up along the back berm area uh, about 15 yards away, uh, and these two were trapped, uh, I believe they were in jug three. Uh, it looks like what happens is you either get penetration just into jug three or it glances off and cracks the jug and kind of tears it and it's kind of just skids off to the side. There is quite a bit of deviation uh, from these rounds after they, uh, as they penetrate through jug two. Um, but unfortunately that penetration is quite shallow. Uh, that would equate to probably about 8 inches of penetration in ordnance gel. Now, Liberty claims 12 inches of penetration. Uh, I'm probably assuming they're using synthetic gel, uh, and they're prob probably why they're getting those results. I'd have to see this in ordnance gel, uh, calibrated ordnance gel, to, to really uh, have any faith in that claim. I I'm thinking it's probably more along the lines of about 8 inches of penetration. However, excellent velocity. The velocity is actually in rifle territory for sure. Uh, we're definitely in the velocity region where the temporary cavity uh, will begin contributing to the uh, permanent cavity. Um, so that that's an inter that's that's interesting. Also, this round uh, should have no problem penetrating soft body armor. So um, there's there's that aspect of it too. Uh, but that penetration depth is a bit shallow. Uh, of course, if I had to choose between this and the uh, the common what, 135 grain nozzler that everyone seems to to love because it's uh, you know it's velocity I think is somewhere around 1,700 feet per second or something. Honestly, I, I'd go with this. It looks like penetration depths are as good or better, uh, and this velocity velocity is actually well within uh, where we should be if we want to start seeing that temporary stretch cavity start to go to work for us. Um, so pretty pretty interesting results, although I think the jury is out uh, on on this in comparison to conventional loadings. For our 223 and our 545, we got nearly identical results, which is not surprising. Both rounds are VMAX bullets. They're constructed the same, roughly the same caliber, same mass. Um, so not too surprising that the results were very similar. We got three jugs of penetration uh, that'll equate to roughly, you know, 10 inches or so, probably 10 and a half, somewhere up in there. That's what you could probably expect out of these rounds in terms of penetration ordnance gel, which is not too bad. Uh, we're Again, we're in that velocity range where temporary stretch cavity is going to go to work for us and actually start doing some permanent damage. Um, so some interesting results. Uh, I don't know... I'm not going to say that I would use this for uh, defensive purposes in the 10 millimeter. Um, it certainly uh, is an interesting loading uh, that maybe should uh, be researched more, uh, possibly try to do some hunting with them or something of that nature. Uh, I, I would like to see maybe Liberty bump this, uh, bump this grainage up maybe to a 75 grains or so and see what kind of velocity, if they could still exceed, say, 2,300 feet per second and increase that penetration depth. That'd be, uh, that would be interesting to see how that would turn out. So... Uh, but uh, the velocity certainly was true. <laughs> we exceeded 2,400 feet per second with our standard length barrel and our extended 6-inch barrel. We, we exceeded 2,500 feet per second. So that's, that's impressive. It bested both the 545 and, and 223 in our shorter barrels. I think you would need about a 10, 10 and a half inch barrel to get that kind of velocity uh, with the same bullet weight uh, out of a 223. So 
Uh, you know, for me, the jury's out, but it was a, a fairly uh, interesting test. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'd really like to hear your feedback on this. What are your thoughts on it? Uh, have you hunted with this Liberty Civil Defense loading, for instance? Have you hunted a uh, whitetail or, or uh, wild hogs or anything like that? Uh, and if so, what, what results did you see? All right, guys, I hope you found that interesting. Go ahead and hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't done so already, and please keep the comments professional. See you next time.